Rider fans, Ross Merrill here and I can't believe this is finally actually happening. But today, I'm going to be opening the complete selection modification V-Buckle and Drag Visor set from Kamen Rider Ryuki. Three, two, one. Oh my god. And now, for the grand unveiling. Wow, just wow. This might be the most epic box I've ever seen in my entire life. Let's just quickly go through what exactly is on the art in the cover. Of course, first, we have Kamen Rider Ryuki with his advent card for Drag Redder right in the center as like the main highlight of the artwork and surrounding him are all the other 12 riders. We have Oja here, Impera, Scissors, Fem, Guy, Knight, Ryuga, Odin, Zolda, Verde, Tiger, as well as Raya up on the upper left. And yes, that is all 13 riders. I'm a bit surprised, but actually maybe not so surprised that they didn't include Abyss in this artwork because after all, Abyss was only included in Decade, so he's not exactly part of like the original 13 nostalgia. The box itself has actually arrived in really pristine condition. There are of course like a few cuts and band marks at the edges of the container, but nothing to be too sore about, so props to Premium Bandai for that. Up on the top of the box, we have a really awesome design with all 13 monster logos from the original 13 riders from Ryuki. I believe it's somewhat arranged according to the timing of debut, so of course Ryuki, well actually technically Knight appeared first, but he is, Ryuki is the main character, so we have Ryuki first, followed by Knight, then of course Scissors, Zolda, and Raya, Guy, Oja, and so on, but of course Odin is at the end, and then we have the three movie exclusive riders right before him. And on the back, we have this awesome looking artwork of Ryuki Survive clashing with Knight Survive, one of the most iconic scenes and moments of the series. But of course, the best part of this artwork is probably the complete selection modification logo over here, which is actually a reflector as if it's in a mirror. So that is very nice following the sort of mirror wall theme with this box. And now I'm just going to gently slide out what's inside this container. So inside we have two separate boxes, one for the V-Buckle on the right and one for the Drag Visor on the left. So let's start by opening the V-Buckle box. So on the front we have a very nice artwork of Ryuki and Knight with Knight turning backwards. And on the back of the box we basically have the reverse with Knight facing forward and Ryuki with his back facing us. So just a piece of advice for when you're opening really nice CSM boxes like this. When you're using your pair of scissors or pen knife to cut open the tape that's sealing the side of the box, do not remove the tape itself unless you're a master tape remover because if you're not too careful, there is a very high risk of peeling off some of the paint, some of the painted uh, cardboard on top of the box itself and that is just going to... Yeah, not only does it decrease the value of the item as a whole, it just kind of looks really ugly. Even though, of course, it won't be on top of the really nice artwork, it'll be on the side where the tape is. But, yeah, I still feel it's very jarring, so it would be a good idea not to try to peel off the tape and just leave it there after you've cut it open. And now, for the moment of truth. my god oh my god is this really happening after like how many years has it been 17 years close to 17 years i mean it is geo now and Ryuki was the third heisei series so it has been about 17 years i'm trying to be very careful with this so i don't screw anything up at all i do not want to hurt the box do not want to hurt the items inside and here we go First, we have a pretty nice looking instruction manual, but who cares about that? Alright, so I'm just going to start with the belt itself, removing it very gently, as gently as possible. Alright, 
Wow. So if you guys don't know, this is my very first CSM item. So I'm pretty amazed by the fact that it's an actual belt instead of like the usual D at the straps we get in the deluxe toys. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to cut this open a little. And there we have it, the complete selection modification V buckle in all its glory. Fitted for adult use and the exact same size as worn by the actual actors and characters in the show. Wow! So I actually do have the deluxe V buckle. So overall the design is quite similar but of course the most noticeable thing is the huge slot for the dead case now since it's much bigger. We have two buttons over here on the left and another two on the right. These are for activating, uh, I think just one on the right. Yeah, the one on the bottom right isn't a button. Which will be for activating the special sound effects that come with this belt. Here we have the flashing lights. And turning it around, it is quite incredible. So here in the middle we just have the basically the battery case and the power switch. The back does have a pretty nice and cool design. At least it's not just plain black. And as you can see, for those of you guys who don't own a CSM, it is quite incredible what they've done. They make it on the outside look like the actual belt in the show, but the inside is a proper strap belt, which allows you to wear it no matter what size your waist is going to be. It is adjustable as well. So I tried switching the power on, but it looks like it doesn't come with batteries, just like the deluxe toy. So I think in this, uh, I'm going to turn this into a two-part video. And in the first part, I'm just going to review what the items look like and just unbox it. But then I'll upload a second part, uh, maybe sometime next week, with all of the sound effects. And of course, we can't forget our typical belt accessories. They're, oh, these look so good and feel so good. All right. So uh, first of all, we have these two... Uh, things. I'm not sure what uh, what exact purpose they serve but they go on the sides of your waist when you wear the belt just like in Ryuki as well as uh, one of the belt uh, I'm not sure what exactly this is called like a holder or like a strap or something but yeah it comes with all the belts even the DX ones and right in the middle here what is this interesting looking deck and it is a deck here we have the deck of the advent cards that come together with the CSM uh, V buckle. And we'll take a look at the cards later. Okay, now I'm going to shift the angle of the video a bit so we can take a very good look at all 17 deck cases that come with the CSM V buckle. And this is the dream right here. This is the dream. Back when I watched Ryuki as a kid, this is probably the device or object that I adored most within the series and when the cake come out I actually considered getting the complete selection versions of these just so that I could finally have the full set but that was really expensive at the time but I did discover that there was a special 13 deck case set that wasn't, uh, I don't think it was DX but it actually came out during the Ryuki series and it's of a different scale essentially but the point was that it came with all 13 decks so I would have been satisfied with that as well but in the end it was a really rare collector's item so even though it was cheaper than the complete selection I didn't manage to get it in the end and last year, complete selection modification announced this was my chance anyway, enough rambling let's start off with the first deck and yes uh, the plastic isn't going to do justice to these, so I am definitely going to take all of them out so that you guys can take a very good look at them. And oh my god. I, I can't actually begin to describe the feelings that are actually going through me right now. Like, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, but <laughs> it just feels, oh, the nostalgia is just flowing in. And there's like a bit of disbelief that I'm actually holding these devices and unlike the sort of toy-like feel of the deluxe toys, these feel real, like, oh my god. So the back isn't too detailed. Uh, actually, I mean, we're not going to see the, the back a lot, so I actually don't mind that at all. But the front, just look at how they've emblazoned the monster logos in front in gold. It's practically shining. And yeah, the cult, it's just so well painted. It should be open. Yes. Yes. Alright. So for the deluxe ones, I actually have a uh, knight as well as tiger. And they look similar, but it just feels completely different. Like, especially the gold. And we here we have the brown that case of Kamen Rider Emperor. 
I'm just gonna slot him back in first. Alright. And of course next we have the asshole who didn't really know what he wanted to do with his life for a really long time coming in in a dark blue deck case we have Kamen Rider Tiger. Now just looking at the deck cases like this, you realize that the designs on the back of the like gold logo or emblem are actually really simplistic, but this is exactly what we got in the show and that's why it's just making me feel so <laughs> a little bit touched right now to be able to hold these in my hands, really nice tiger. Uh, yeah, and the back is just blank as well. Alright, very nice. <laughs> I really need to stop gushing over these. This is just so incredible. Oh, here we go! Here we go! Definitely one of the fan favorites, one of the cooler riders from this series despite his mental attitude. And hmm, it's a... Uh, the back of this seems to have a bit of markings, but that's fine. The important part is the front, and yes! This is the Oja deck case as I remember it, with that tongue sticking out of Venom Sneaker. That's looking so incredible. This is amazing. Just love the these markings on in the corners as well. Some of them don't have no it just kind of adds to the personality of each deck. Like how some have like certain features that others don't. Not all of them have these like uh, designs on the corners. And here, yes, this is grey. The grey is actually very well done, although it might be a bit hard to see through my camera because of the orange lighting. But just for comparison, the one here on the left in Para is actually brown. And unlike the other deck cases we've seen so far, he doesn't have like four white things in the corners. He actually has these like grasslands on the bottom, which is really cool to compare. And here we have Kamen Rider Guy, another typical uh, bad guy character pretty much, but he got his just desserts at the hands of Oja's final Wait, not Oja's final bed. Oja used him as a shield. Right, alright. Okay. And here we go, putting back Guy. And up next, this pink color is unmistakable. We have Kamen Rider Raya. Poor guy with a poor fate, but definitely one of my most favorite characters from the series. I just kind of like how he was portrayed and the whole trying to change fate even though he was a, a what's it called, a fortune teller. Really nice. And I've always liked the evil diver as the monster design as well, even though he was completely CG. Although most of the Ryuki monsters were so big that they were just CG, but yes. A very, very nice design for a card deck. The back is just gonna be blank as usual. There we go for Raya. And what's this in the back here? Oh! Here we have Zolda. Alright. Zolda's design, definitely one of my favorites in the series as well. Love all of his, all of his cannons. And the bull marking, the bull logo on his deck just looking so intense, so intimidating. Really impressive. With going with that dark green, it just looks so good and I really love how the gears were actually taken care of on this deck case. Yeah, they're really actually nicely placed on and designed as well. The back, as usual, should be blank. Yep. And the inside is just basically plain colour as well. Oh, these are so plain but so cool! And here we have scissors! The guy who, how long, how long did he last? Two, three episodes? Well, you guys get the drift. Sorry if you guys haven't watched Ryuki and I'm basically spoiling you, but I have no regrets. Like, I have to talk about Ryuki while opening this, man. Like, that, that's the whole point. Alright, Kamen Rider Scissors. Actually, I really like crabs as an animal, so this is actually one of the really nice, nicer design ones for me. I really love how it's portrayed with the claws looking really awesome. Like, whoever came out with the monster emblems and logos for the Ryuki card decks is pretty damn genius. And yes, this is going to be a black, or you might call it dark blue. Okay, actually it's kind of black, if you take a look at it. Yep, one of the three black deck cases. So does that mean Scissors could have gotten a survive form as well, and then get like a bright gold or brown or a light brown deck case and Scissors survive? And okay, here we go. This is... Kamen Rider Abyss. Actually, one of my most favorite Kamen Riders of all time because his design and the idea behind him as a ad possible additional rider for Ryuki that appeared in Decay just appeals to me so much, especially the fact that his contract monster was from the original Kamen Rider Ryuki. They did not come up with some weird-ass new monster for him. It was all within the law and of course the Scion is really nice. 
goes really well with the shark theme and the you can you guys can see the contours on the te the jagged teeth itself right it's just so cool that's incredible really nice design for abyss and yes i'm saving the main characters for last that's why i'm coming oh blind deck blind deck <laughs> very nice i love this all right oh no a blank deck i feel like i can hear the sounds in my ears already this is awesome like okay this might actually be the coolest deck in this entire set just for being the blank deck the blank deck is just so awesome it just represents like the infinite potential like just holding in your hand you feel like you have the power to form a contract although you don't have the contract card although maybe it's in the list of cards that i'm going to open later and yes wow the blank deck the blank deck, guys. So awesome. And we're gonna put it back now. Following that, of course, we have the mastermind behind, behind everything. And this is in a sort of a royal brownish sort of gold color. Kamen Rider Odin's deck case. Okay, just incredible. I mean, time van, man. Time van. This is. Now, a lot of people love this character, he was just so cool even though he didn't get a lot of screen time but yes, that is amazing just being able to hold Odin's deck case. And all the deck cases I mean, and okay, here is another star, especially considering his recent appearance as an another rider in Kamen Rider Geo. Here we have the Kamen Rider Ryuga deck case done perfectly well. This is perfection right here, a perfect replication of the Ryuga deck case with the black. Just look at the slight contours on the logo itself that are just so well done. It's just incredible and like the blackness, the whole blackness and evil of the thing is just amazing. Very nice. And there we go, there's Ryuga. Need to bend a bit forward to grab them. One of the pure, very serene deck cases in white, a very nice contrast to the majority of the darker colour deck cases. So here is a very nice symbol as well. I just love how like the silver uh, adornments on the corners actually blend in and sort of camouflage with the white. It's a really nice touch and sort of really uh, fits with the swan team as well. Sorry about that. And yes, this is looking really awesome. Here we have Kamen Rider Fan deck case. Inside is white, and the back is white as well. And finally, here we have a more light jungle green. Okay, wait. I'm not sure. Is jungle green light? I don't think so. Jungle green sounds like it'd be darker, but yes! Oh! This is a very nice uh, emeraldish chrome metallic green going with Kamen Rider Verde. I actually don't remember his deck case looking this good. I thought it was a plain a green, but they kind of added like a chrome texture to it. And in fact, for the most, a lot of the other colored deck cases as well, they have this sort of chrome texture which makes them really pop out and look a lot better than I think they might have been in the original show. Now that is very nice. Because the chameleon symbol and logo is one of the least impressive ones, but a really very well designed emblem as well. Now we're going to put him back. That's the end of the movie riders. And now it's time to get into the realm of the main characters. Starting off with the anti-hero Kamen Rider Knight. Now who doesn't love Kamen Rider Knight, right? Such a classic design with the black and the gold and the silver wing slash marks. Very nice. And here we have, of course, the classic, the beginning of the fight. Everyone remembers this guy, and here we have Kamen Rider Ryuki's deck case. Now, I can't, I can't begin to describe the feelings that are like flowing through me right now. I never had the deluxe for this, I had deluxe for night, but this, so this is my first time holding like any product for the Ryuki deck case. And, it's just so nostalgic, it has so much feels for me because Ryuki is definitely one of the most uh, impactful Kamen Rider series I've experienced in my life especially being the, my first exposure, technically my first exposure to Kamen Rider It just looks so good and it's just so much inner meaning for me <sighs> This is awesome I'm so glad I spent so much of my savings just to get this 
Anyway, I'm going to have to move a bit to grab the survive cases because they are all the way behind out of my reach. And here we have Kamen Rider Knight Survive, the first Knight deck case, which transforms his normally dark black uh, <laughs> deck case into a very nice dark blue that's actually probably the same dark blue as the Kamen Rider Tiger deck case. Very nice. Let's put him back and get our final deck case out of the 17 that we are obtaining in this set. And here, Kamen Rider Ryuki survived. Now this one, I was not expecting it to have a greater impact or effect on me than the normal one, but it is having a greater effect on me right now because it just represents so much and it looks so good in that chrome metallic red paint as well. Everything is so well done, even though it's literally just a recolor of the black normal Ryuki deck case. This is just so good. This, this is amazing right now. I just can't believe I'm actually finding hold in these after 17 years. Anyway, now let's take a look at the deck of advent cards that we received before. I actually already have the full advent card archives from the complete selection. But these ones I feel are a lot better because the CS ones were really huge. So I didn't really like them. The CSM ones that we are seeing here are a lot more faithful to the original card size as we see from the show. Here is the card back. Looking really well done, really faithful. Super awesome. Just gonna turn them around so that you guys can see the top over there. Awesome replication. And as you guys can see, they're kind of like a bit matte. So they feel really good and plasticky. Def definitely not like cheap uh, paper cards. So I feel really confident about these last thing and they are definitely a super awesome addition to my collection and I will be needing them for the Drag Visor as well. So here starting off we have Drag Redder, Final Vent for Ryuki, Darkwing Advent, Final Vent for Knight. Okay, I believe uh, we are just going to get the Advents and Final Vents for each deck and then the other cards, the Strike Vent and all that will probably come with the Drag Visor for Cancer, uh, the scissors, final vent. Magna Giga. One of my favorite monsters. Really hoping to get him in SHF someday. And then the final vent for Zola as well. Evil Diver. Final vent for Raya. Metal Galas. Final vent for Guy. Venom Snaker. Super cool artwork. Final vent for Oja. There's Wilder for Kamen Rider Tiger, definitely one of the more fierce, brutal creatures in this collection. Final vent for Tiger. The Gazelle! The, the Gazelle Horde creatures. And the final vent for Imperor. Bio Grisa, the chameleon monster for uh, Verde, and here's his final vent. Blank Wing for Kamen Rider Fan, and here is her final vent. I really always liked her final vent for like the contrast between the white and black like light stream effects. And here we have Drag Blacker in a super awesome looking artwork for Kamen Rider Ryuga whose final vent is worth 7,000 attack, which is distinctly more powerful than the other final vents of the other riders. Unless of course you compare it to Odin I believe, and here we have Gold Phoenix whose attack alone is 8,000. And yes, Odin's final vent is 10,000, ranking at the top. And here we have Drag Ranzer, the evolution of Drag Redder when Ryuki assumes survive. And the Ryuki survive final vent is 9,000, which is quite impressive. And here we have Dark Raider, the evolution of Dark Wing when Knight assumes survive with an 8,000 power final vent. So that is lower than Ryuki survive. And finally, a contract card! Oh! Oh no! This is so cool! Alright, alright. <laughs> First, the contract card being super cool, super awesome, really nice that they included this. It's not going to be used for anything, I think. I'm not sure if they have a contract effect, a uh, sound effect somewhere installed in the belt, but I definitely want to keep it in my black, in my blank deck case. And here we have Abyss Slasher, as well as the final vent for Kamen Rider Abyss. Alright, so. With the conclusion of this deck, we basically looked at everything in the CSM V buckle. So let's move on to the Drag Visor. Oh, and just to show you guys how the cards actually fit into the decks, there's actually a mechanism here that allows you to push down, as you guys can see, so which will create a space for the cards to enter. 
So all you really have to do is take the card you want to put in, in this case contract, and then just push it down and then slot it in. Yeah, just like that. And they can very conveniently be pulled out. Putting the decks into the V-buckle feels really good as well. All you really need to do is slide them in, just like this. And to take them out, slide them out. 